So, <clears throat> Lord of the Flies is a fucked up book. So what is Lord of the Flies? Simple. Lord of the Flies is the story of a bunch of prissy English boys. I, I think they were all white. I can't remember. It, uh, I'm not sure if they even told. It shouldn't matter anyway, should it? Hmm. Anyway, so there's six of them. And I, I, there's, I think there's six of them. God. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I, uh, I haven't done this one in a while. When I was a freshman in high school, I took an honors course in English, and uh, that bitch required me to make like a packet. It took me a month to make this dumb little packet just about Lord of the Flies. And um, I, a lot of people hate this book. Somehow I have really grown to like At no stage did I ever hate it. I will admit though, at first I was really sad because she gave us the option of Frankenstein flies and people voting for Lord of the Flies, I always thought Frankenstein was a cooler idea for, like, a book. But when I actually read Frankenstein, like, eh, I don't know. I mean, I, I feel Lord of the Flies is a much more interesting book, if, if nothing else. Um, so, Lord of the Flies is the story of these kids. They get, they, uh, basically crash land on this island. All the adults are dead. They don't really have any supplies. Um, and it's a very weird, like almost hypothetical island because it randomly has all these pigs on it. And um, <laughs> I don't know. It's just a little weird that it's got these pigs on it. It's got pigs on it and it's got flies on it, of course. And um, so all these pigs are running the island, and that's how they survive, sort of. They survive off of that and random shit in the jungle, I guess. And, um, what the main story is about is that over the course of however long they're on this island, uh, they separate into groups of three. There's three of them that want to keep order, and there's three of them that just break into savagery. And this gets worse and worse, and, um, people get killed until eventually um, at the very end of the book one of them's like the, the last good guy is about to get killed by all the, the savages and uh, they're kids by the way all of these are just kids and um, evidently a ship just shows up and the guy's like what the fuck's happened here and that's how the book ends so on paper not much going on what happens in that crazy period is the, obviously the, the point of the book. And uh, a lot of it is pretty crazy. So a lot of it is little nuanced details of them breaking down slowly and slowly. But I guess the thing about it that um, I think the thing about it that as a book I like the most is that it does a really good job of showing that decisions are always decisions. I mean, it's, it's really as simple as that. And that people are innately who they are inside in a lot of situations. That, that's what I think I took from it. So, like, the three kids that came that were the good, good kids, you know, they were kind of nerdy. They were. They were a little nerdy, but, you know, they were good on the inside. Their parents had taught them that you should treat people nice. And the other three kids were parents who probably neglected them and around very much and taught them that you need to like just cut throats to get to the top. Those are the two mentalities. The two main mentalities working in white culture mostly is that you either need to be ruthless or you need to be compassionate. So basically the idea is that you have a choice. You always have a choice. Everybody always has a choice. But here's the problem is that consequences are... There, there are no consequences. Don't think of it. There's going to be any holy retribution for anything. Because this is what happened. This is the story. Three of those kids decided they wanted to just start killing the other kids for fun. 
and eating as many pigs as they wanted to. And the other ones tried to be good guys, and two of them ended up fucking dead. And the third one almost was. And if that, he showed, when he showed up, I'm sure that all of those kids are going to go home. And nothing's going to happen to him because that situation's so fucked up. Nobody could possibly, you know, nobody could possibly put those kids in jail. They have no idea. That situation is insane. So there was no consequences. The, tri the tribal kids were right. You could just kill them you know, for fun and get away with it. But the question is, do you feel good about that? Was it worth it to you? So why does Lord of Flies get a bad rap? It gets a bad rap for a couple different reasons. Uh, one of them is that Lord of the Flies has symbolism out the ass. Just symbolism everywhere, constantly. To the point that no normal human brain would just casually pick it out reading through. And it gets frustrating that it, everything is so symbolic and he's tr forcing it to be so symbolic. That... I don't know, so to some extent, you're just like trying to figure out what the fuck's going on. It's, it's not terrible, but it's frustrating, and there's no real, I don't see any merit in it. Another thing is that uh, it's a very straightforward story. I mean, it does read at like a fifth grade level. It's, it's not trying to like change the way you think about anything, but it is a particularly violent book using its basic language, and I think that's an interesting thing too. So. My favorite parts of the book, by far, despite my hatred of the symbolism, are the, the, the pig scenes. So there's a section in the book, and all you have to do is just do this. If you, if you got a report on this and you just want to get through it, here, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of advice. Just analyze the shit out of that pig scene. So there's a, there's a section of the book where the fat kid, the good fat kid, um, has a pig's head on a spike. And he is the quote-unquote Lord of the Flies. That is the flies that are on him, because he's rotting. And that's the joke about, I guess that's the whole point of the book, is that he he's the Lord of the Flies, and P uh, Piggy, which is what they call him, I think. Um, not the pig, the, the kid. He He's like talking to him. He basically loses his shit, loses his goddamn mind. And he just talks to this pig's head on a stake. And the pig's head on a stake is just telling him, it's sort of like basically his id trying to talk to him. It's just nothing but like, skim through it, uh, try to focus on the first chapters, but you'll, you'll start to see kind of where it wanes down. You'll know, you'll be able to pick up the important parts of the book, but again, it's only 150 pages or something like that, so you watch, you really just sit down and read a fucking book. Six out of ten. It could be a much better written book, but the concept is excellent. 